So you're finally taking the social distancing thing seriously. No, not by choice. It's just kind of purely coincidental here. <laughs> <laughs> it's very weird looking across from you instead of sitting uh, three feet away from me, <laughs> as you typically are, you're about 12 feet away from me. Yeah, and I, I got a few more buttons and stuff that are kind of working with here now, and a lot of extra stuff. <laughs> uh, I think we need to talk about this on this episode a little bit. Um, we, we can do that. <laughs> is what we're doing. Uh, are, are, is your intros rolling after, or, well, we're going to tell people about some yeah, changes here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a little different from here on. It's time to hit the trail, lock in those hubs, and throw it into low range. Because you are listening to Wheel It with Keith and Johnny Orange. They're here to talk about 4x4s, trucks, and everything to do with enjoying the great outdoors. Buckle up. Here's your hosts, Keith and Johnny Orange. All right, John. Um, do you want me to tell the people? Do you want to tell the people? Uh, how, do, how, do we break, how do we break the sad news to our, our listeners? I, I I don't know. I'm trying to think of a funny way to do it, and I, I got nothing. Well, I, yeah, there's. I guess there's nothing really like funny about it per se. But at the same point, uh, I, I I'm glad that everything's all right. But uh, let's just just come out and say it here. Uh, Andrew, the producer, is no longer with us. We but, lied. We've been making him up the whole time. We're through- <laughs> We're throwing voices across the room. It's 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 all yeah, fake. Yeah, he's, he's fake. He's fake. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's okay. That that gotta work. That gotta work, John. <laughs> um, no, Andrew, the producer, uh, we had told you a couple episodes back, uh, is now a father. He had some big career changes, a number of things in life, and he asked to step back from the Wheel and Podcast right now. There, there's no fights. There's no. There was no bad blood between no. John and myself. Uh, we greatly appreciate Andrew getting us to this point. Absolutely. A, a huge thank you to him. Hopefully he'll listen to this episode at least. And he'll always be welcome to come back, whether as Excuse a me. guest or if he wants to be involved oh, yeah. in some way in the future uh, with some other type of technology that we do. You know, we'll just see. We don't know what the future will bring. but Yeah, I mean, if we do any more like the webcast stuff like we did, you know, months ago, we'll, we'll definitely still need his help. Maybe get him out for some one-off stuff at least. I mean, hugely appreciative of everything he did for us with all that. Um, I mean, this part, the day-to-day, that that can be figured out. <laughs> exactly. Um, so you, you guys might notice a little bit of sound differences in the next couple episodes just while trying to sort all this stuff out. Uh, so hopefully it won't be too bad for you. <laughs> well, and so the reason some of the differences here... Uh, Mr. Johnny Orange has taken over Andrew's spot. He's sitting over at uh, where Andrew would sit before in front of the mixer and the computer. And he now has a microphone over there as well, as we always wanted Andrew to have one. But uh, there's now a microphone over in the producer's desk. And uh, so Johnny Orange is now Mr. Johnny the Orange producer. So, um, <laughs> wait, oh, that works, Johnny. Yeah. No, <laughs> he... Uh, he is going, he, John. You have a, uh, a background in digital media. Yeah. So I, I went to school for video production, uh, animation, all on the digital side. So a little bit of all digital mediums were kind of studied and practiced in school and a little bit outside of. Um, I mean, you guys have heard some of the, the video production stuff that I do and work on. So this is just kind of a little bit more involved in, you know, kind of what I do. Uh, I'm a little out of practice when it comes to audio, <laughs> so just making everything work right and properly uh, just might take me a little bit to figure out. But once I do, you know, it, it'll be good stuff again. I promise. Be super thankful that John is handling this and not me, because if I was handling this uh, with my technological expertise, I would everything be everything would be broken. I would be handwriting this out, and I would be mailing you the podcast. So you would be reading the podcast in my hand, my scratchy handwriting, uh, mailed to you weekly. And I, the postage on that for the 
uh, several hundred listeners we have now would eat me alive after a few <laughs> weeks. Uh, I think a stamp's now over 50 cents, isn't it? Something like that. I have no idea so, on that. No. Yeah. Uh, so, no, uh, be very thankful that uh, John is at the helm now, and I think he's going to do a great job. I and I, I appreciate you, buddy. I really yeah, no appreciate you taking this over. Uh, um, no worries. Like I said, I don't, I don't mind. Um, hang on one quick second, though. Uh-oh. Oh man, John's doing something. He's 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 making Oh, making adjustments I get the mic already. in my face. This is driving me nuts. Oh, okay. Right now inch over. Yeah, typically over in our uh, area where we have our mics, they're hanging down from the ceiling and it, he didn't do that where he's set up right now. He's got it actually off the desk, so I probably could have done that. That would have made this a lot easier actually. Yeah. Uh, but uh we're going to have to reset the studio around oh, different yeah. ways and, and do different things. Uh, yeah, I won't be a big deal. That. Just got to figure it out as we go. And um, speaking of, of the things that you've taken over and you've done, uh, you I know it's been a couple of weeks since we've uploaded. We're actually only going to miss a week, I think, on our upload date. Yeah, we this. missed this current. Well, the week we're recording this, we missed this week's episode. And partially, so we'll be missing one. partially was that we were both really busy, but <clears> you <throat> were super busy because you Ugh. were getting all of our Patreon episodes finally up to Yeah, I, I got all the rest of the raw files. Uh, they were, the last actual couple weeks I've been working on all that stuff. Um, so the last episodes of the show I got in the raw files... Uh, I got almost, actually, I only got a third of our files, like all of our stuff from day one to now from Andrew, so I got to get the rest of it from him still. I need a bigger hard drive. So you're, you're familiar with like computer file sizes a little bit at least, like a megabyte, yeah. a gigabyte. Take a stab how many gigabytes worth of files we have since we've started from day one. You know, I wouldn't even know. I don't even know how much. I, well, okay. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think I remember someone telling me that an average feature length movie on a computer was about one and a half gigabytes. Is that correct? Uh, on a lower quality, yeah. So okay. take your, your typical DVD with like extra features and everything. That whole disc is about 8.5 or 8.7 gigabytes or oh. 8.5. Okay, so we're audio only <clears throat> for the most part. We did do some video though for a few episodes. Yeah, so we did. Remember that. This, we did. this is all inclusive. Every single file, anything we've ever had to do with the podcast, including uh deleted stuff. Yep, audio, video, <sighs> raw files, finished Man, files. We got to be Well, at what point does a gigabyte become a terabyte after 1000? 1, 1024 gigabytes is 1 terabyte. 1,024. I'll tell you this, we're I don't, not in the terabyte range. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think we're at a terabyte no. yet. 800, maybe? A little over 600. A little 600. Okay, <laughs> yeah. all right. That's... So I, I brought a, a 200 gig drive to his house, 250. Um, I managed to get all the files back to episode 59, where I was able to pick up with the after shows. Went through, got all of those done, the last couple episodes of the main show here for you guys. And then all the raw stuff to make everything work. Graphics. Uh, we have the ads we did for ABC and uh, for Chad at Quick Draw there. Okay. So everything's there, uh, minus the past episodes. That's just what I have to go get from them. I mean, is this so. going to turn into a Doctor Who thing where there's like seven years of missing Doctor Who movies that nobody's ever seen? There shouldn't be, no. I, I've got, like, there were a few episodes we did not do an after show for. Um, I went through a lot of files to find them all uh, three or four times to make sure I had everything. There's a chance we're missing one or two still, but we, we got them all. I found, as you know, the one interview that we had there with, um, with Pop Pop. You found it. I found it. It's edited. It's uploaded. Everything's 100% up to date with every file that I have as far as Patreon. And one of the changes we were discussing, and we're, I'm going to go ahead and do this, um, so for all of you guys listening who've been wanting to check our Patreon on, Patriot, I'm saying that, want to check our Patreon out, there we go. That's a tongue twister. Yeah. So for all you folks that want to check that out, see if you want to throw a few bucks down a month for some extra bonus material there, we will be making some of those episodes free. So if you're a member of Patreon, just sign up for that. You'll be able to see some of these episodes free. Uh, we're kind of discussing sort of a... A model for that i like the idea of just keeping like the interviews as part of the paid material but we're going to throw a teaser out for you guys we're going to make the pop pop interview uh free oh i love it so that i think is hands down one of our our best episodes of the after show so far 
And uh, I think people will really get a kick out of that. I'm going to make some of the earlier episodes of that free. Um, I need your help with that a little bit. We're going to go back and add all the descriptions, details to it, and actually kind of fill it out a little bit more. I'm probably going to have so. to listen to them again just to be able to figure I'm out okay the descriptions <laughs> or something. I, <laughs> yeah. y- you'll have to give me something because, yeah. I mean, I can't. I mean, you got to remember that our after shows were not always themed exactly what the regular shows were no, as well. No, we're not always exactly sober with that. <laughs> no, probably. No. Probably less than 10% of the time. Yeah, that's uh, what makes them so much fun. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I like the idea, though. Let's make some free. And Pop Pop with one broken bulb, uh, I think that's a, a great idea offering his episode for oh, yeah. free. That was a fun episode. That and, was a blast. And oh, my so God. <laughs> we're going to have to get him on again. Um, oh, for sure. And, you know, folks, uh, the easiest way that you can find us on Patreon, if you're interested in listening to the after show, is... Uh, Pay, you just go to patreon.com or just, you know backslash wheeling i believe is what it is uh wheeling radio wheeling radio yep or just google uh wheeling on patreon should be able to find that as well yep uh and like john said two bucks a month uh yeah, it's, that's the lowest subscription rate we might adjust some of those tiers up or down a little bit we may uh we're, we're gonna play with some of that stuff so we're kind of going through a revamp of the the, the so our main uh, podcast host podbean um, just kind of switching everything over. Um, just about all of that's done. And, so, and yeah. look at it this way. The, the money that you spend here, it's, it's not making us rich or anything like that. Uh, we're, we're, we're about breaking even right now. <laughs> our equipment that we have is now two years old, which in the audio industry, that's ancient. So, oh, that, that's two. This is a lot older. <laughs> we, yeah, that computer looks like it remembers Bill Gates being alive. Um, He's still alive. Steve Jobs. There we go. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, no, I think it does though. Yeah, it probably... I got this 2010, 2011, I think. All right. Well, oh, yeah. yeah, that's pretty old. And so we need to update some equipment. Um, you know, that is going to be, you know, money from that Patreon will help out with that. So any, you know, if you can do that, it's great. If you can't, you want to just listen to the regular show. But you are, you are honestly missing just a little bit with the wheel and show. Yeah, we have a lot of fun with that one for sure. Yeah. So, uh, well, John. Um, you know, so anyways, you at the helm here at all of our peaks and our valleys and all the other stuff <laughs> of the uh, stock market of our audio sound here. If this is the stock market, someone's going to have an aneurysm seeing the rise and falls of this. Mm. <laughs> not, 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 hopefully not you, Keith. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, my old, uh, my old heart is uh, still holding together pretty good. But. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, switching gears here a little bit, uh, we really haven't talked Jeeps or anything too much here. Um, or you see, mine's back on or the road. off-road vehicles. I see. I was just yeah. going to mention that yours is in the parking lot. Did you uh, um, get her going finally? Yeah, I, I. So it's embarrassing to say this. If this is what the actual problem was, I checked the engine oil level. It was quite low. I don't want to admit how low. Uh, so I, I topped that off, and I I checked every fluid I could think of. Everything else was fine. The noise that it was making was, I pushed the clutch in, I took the clutch out, the noise changed. So I assumed it was a clutch noise again. Well, that last probably month and a half there, it was too cold to go out and look at it ever. Uh, so I got some hand issues in the cold weather, so I can't really do much. So I topped the oil off, I took it for a test drive. I sat idle in a parking lot, which is where it started making the noise, and a Taco Bell drive through one night. I sat there with the clutch in, a few minutes, nothing. Sat there with the clutch out, in neutral both times, nothing. Hmm. Thought maybe I just need to drive it more, because the night it made it, I had driven about 40 minutes. So a couple nights later, did that. I drove around for probably 45 minutes, almost an hour, just idled in a parking lot, same thing, clutch in, clutch out. Held it for a couple minutes, or the other way. It hasn't made the noise since. So I'm figuring one of two things. Either one, the engine oil was actually low enough to make a noise from something not being lubricated properly. Or two, the leak from the engine oil is actually lubricating something else <laughs> that because the oil was low wasn't getting enough oil. So either way, the noise went away, and I've been driving it the last week without any issues so far. 
I'm yeah, exactly <laughs> knock on wood. Glad to see her on the road. Oh, uh, me too. I have greatly missed it. I did finally get my CB radio installed. Um, and now that's not transmitting. I can't figure that out. That's a whole other problem for another day, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which reminds me. Well, uh, from my end of things, I, I really haven't been wrenching on the old 4x4s too much. I, same oil thing. The oil leak in the excursion is up to about two gallons a month now. Oh, wow. And uh, Yours is worse than mine. Yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> I don't feel so bad. <laughs> I, I always know when in the morning it, is like, basically not stalls out but runs really rough. It's because the 7.3's got a oil-fired injector and... <laughs> um, once it starts running like crap, I know that it is low on oil. So nice. I will grab a five-gallon pail of oil, dump a few more in there, and go for how many other weeks? So that... I'll, I'll pass the idea on to you that my old boss at the dealership passed on to me. What you need to do is fabricate a very large sump underneath the vehicle, put a pump at the back. Yeah. <laughs> so it catches the drips and just pumps it back in. With all the road <laughs> dust and bugs and... Well, you could put a filter in line. Yeah, I, mean, I guess on, so. Come on, we're not sav- or, or savages. But. <laughs> uh, what I was going to say is I have been through this cold snap that we had. Uh, I have been writing more. and uh, I have I, a little bit. I've sent a few more pieces out. I do write um, for the Dispatcher magazine. Uh, that is available online. You can, I believe you can also uh, purchase it. Uh, you can become a subscriber. That is a Jeep only publication. It's Ooh. a Jeep history publication. I have now have had an article in every issue of that for the last, I think, five issues. Did you uh, say they do print? Oh, yeah. Excellent. Uh, we're going to talk after. I'm going to sign up for that like probably now. Well, yeah. When we're done. Very cool. Uh, so that's something to check out. Uh, the Dispatcher is very, very neat. And uh, that's uh, done by Norris Benonis uh, Publications. And uh, I'm also writing, of course, for the Thumbprint News, uh, which my mom owns. Uh, but this last issue of the Thumbprint News, I did a feature story on my adventures on Ultimate Adventure. So nice. uh, and we've got a lot of positive feedback out of that. So it's been fun. And, you know, of course, we've reached out to a bunch of people from UA. We've talked to some people. We might still talk to some more people that were on UA. Uh, really keeping in contact through the social medias with some of those uh, folks. And, you know, it's just, it's it, it's it been a good season. You know, we've nice. had a lot of great things uh, going on. Um, the studio here has been interesting. Uh, you know, we, that. <laughs> we've said to our, our listeners before that we are housed in a basement that's kind of a utility type of basement here. Uh, it's like a few camping trips exploded. Well, uh yeah, well, Ooh, that was... Carpet samples. You looking at new carpet for down here? You just installed this. That's for the stairs. <laughs> oh, uh, nice. But the... Um, <laughs> sold the camper. That's why all the camping stuff's in here. Oh, I remember seeing your ad for that. Yeah, it's sold... Mention. I didn't see it, it here. Sold it sold within four hours. Full really? price. Yeah. Wow. Nice. It was... Uh, and I don't even think it was underpriced. I sold it for five times more than I paid for it, so... That's all that matters. Mm-hmm. Hell, a dollar more than you paid for it. Even exactly. <laughs> But, uh, you know, a few weekends ago, I know we had a tentative plan to possibly podcast and it didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, probably a good thing because the sewer backed up into the studio. Oh, fantastic. So I should have kept my boots on. Yeah. No, I mopped mm. everything. The It fortunately did not come into the carpeted area here. Oh, that's lucky. But the concrete area on the other side uh, was backing up and we didn't know what was going on at first. And nice. it ended up being a Sunday night call out to a, a local uh, Rudaway guy and found nice. out that, uh, you know, well over 300 feet from the house, there was a root clump that had gotten ah. into the pipes. And nice. uh, a couple hundred bucks, what money well spent, got the thing taken care of for me. So that was an interesting night. I was down here in boots, you know, sloshing around. Fortunately, it wasn't like black, but it was still sewer water, you yeah. know. But there was so much regular water from backup that it was just kind of somewhat stinky water. I remember so. I did an internship in Emily City. And shortly before I started there, they had gone through and done all new roads in the whole area. So th- that plays important in a second. So we're sitting there one day. We're, we're in the back office, and we're, and we're working on some old film projectors or something. We hear this water running sound. Like, what the heck is that? Open the bathroom door, and the toilet's just overflowing. Clean water. Like, what the hell's going on? 
And, you know, you get that scent of, it was like bubble bath or like head and shoulder shampoo or something. Like, it's from the shower backing up. Hmm. So, you know, they called, reported it to the city, and it turned out everybody on the, like, the four-block radius of New Roads had had the problem. Oh, wow. So they, they sent, you know, a plumber out, or the guy, the owner called a plumber. Plumber came out, and, you know, it's a video production internship. So we're both fascinated by this toilet cam, I'll call it. No, 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 that's, that's, a, that's a different thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, those aren't legal. No, no, the snake camera. Like, okay. what, you know, all plumber uses to snake a drain with a camera on it, right? Yep. So we're watching it, and it gets out to where it meets the road, and it stops. Backs up, and he turns it just right. And you see, like, the outlet. Yep. Well, they can't see me demonstrating this, but imagine a circle and another circle overlapping it at a lower rate. Mm-hmm. The lower rate was what was coming out of the house. Okay. No, was the, whatever. So what had happened... When they went through and they put the new roads in, they went and retamped everything. It pushed all the drains from people's homes a little below grade of the actual drain into the sewer. Lovely. So every single home for like three or four blocks, the, the sewers were all messed up. <laughs> well, that's on the city to repair. Yeah, and yeah, they did. That, yeah. I mean, they came out and did it, but they basically, like, it was. Like the low, the water drains, so like the toilets, they pulled them all off and they capped them all for a couple of days. Uh, and just, it's like, if you can't, it, or the one we did is it was below grade in the house. So the rest of it was, you know, shower sparingly as possible if you can wait or make them quick. Otherwise, it's going to fill up and back up all your drains. Yeah, no, that's, that's the first time. Well, this is, this is the, First time in my life that I've ever been on city sewer. Yeah. Uh, my previous two homes were septic. And even though my first home shouldn't have been on septic because the sewer went by, but it had a new septic system. And so there was no purpose into tapping gotcha. into the sewer. So, but uh, here, this is the first time I've ever been on city sewer. And so I'd never experienced that before. Yeah. Um, fortunately, other people's junk wasn't coming up in this. Uh, That's they, good. They had basically figured out that, you know, we've got a 300 plus foot run back to the barn, mm. and you know, the, and the mains behind the barn, and oh. that's where the clog was was back ah. behind the barn. <laughs> Pardon me, back yes. behind the barn, and they had me that that would happen every once in a while. Mm. So, uh, you know. It uh, it apparently happened, and that was Damn, hopefully taken care of. Yeah, no. Uh, he said, you know, the the Rudaway guy said he goes, hey, you know, you're gonna probably have me out every four or five years, and a couple hundred bucks every four or five years is, you know, it sucks, but at the yeah. same, we know it's gonna happen. Yeah, it's expected at least. So exactly. It's, yeah. Well, that's not too bad. No, not too bad at all. And speaking of the barn, I'm still working on that. Uh, I saw you posted an update picture the other day there. Yeah, the flooring is is coming in nice. That's the roof of an old strip club that, uh, <laughs> that. yeah, uh, burned, and so we're uh, the the mezzanine level is almost done. Uh, nice. That is theoretically, depending on how things go, that might be where our new studio is going to be. Nice. We'll we'll see. So remind me when we do the after show. I've got a really funny story about glitter in regards to. Okay, all it's, right. It's really funny. <laughs> Very good. Let's do it. Um, and then um, you know, so I'll be probably tomorrow finishing that up and then nice. then going to the next level we'll see how things go but nice you know yeah our, our season's starting to amp up for the boat stuff uh the engine's still out that they were repairing so we're going up tomorrow kind of getting a preseason work list going going to try and work on a couple things while we're up there you know it's one of those while the engine's out what can we do on that side and we're gonna try and get all that stuff done Good idea. So, yeah, you want to get all of it done. Maybe steam clean the hold and all that. That would be ideal if we can make it happen. It's in a pretty remote area. We have access to some power and water, uh, so we'll we'll see what we can make okay. happen. Yeah, that's just kind of going over the work list from the Coast Guard of official stuff we have to do, and then what we want to do, things of that nature. So it'll it'll be interesting, um, but I feel it's going to be a good year. I know that's it's pretty booked, which is awesome. I, so it's yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely um you know that's um uh, you know we've got all these great things going on and um you know it's it's it is kind of weird right now 
It is. It's, it's the J- two of us. Just, this is... just the two of us. We're usually just the two. Of us. Yeah, there you All go. Right, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> we usually have Andrew over here sneering at us, weird. kind of like uh, giving us rolling his eyes at our our puns <laughs> and our bad jokes, and or giving um, us uh, hand signals. <laughs> yeah, there's that too. We've gotten a few of those. Yeah. But uh, and he's usually, of course, pre-ordering pizza for dinner and stuff like that on his computer. Mm-hmm. You know, in the middle of it, because we would always do like a pizza break in the middle, but. Yeah, um, I don't know if that's the plan tonight or not. I didn't talk to the lady upstairs, so we'll... I, I don't know what you gave me in that glass was really, really good, and it's gone. So do you need more? Give me yeah. a th- give me a throw this bottle your way. No, there's a lot of equipment in front of me, and liquid and this do not mix. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Let me see if I okay. I'm gonna do it under your desk. Oh crap! Oh, holy Ha-ha. crap! It made it. <laughs> yeah, I told you we could do that. That's awesome. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, tell you what, uh. If you want to talk about Jeeps and stuff like that, I, I, I kind of wanted to wait till the next episode, but if you want to throw it in here, um, it's not really that long of a discussion. If you're going where I think you're going, we can do that now. I mean, we, this so this has been more of a catch-up and update episode, so we should probably add a little bit more about, you know, car and truck stuff. That's kind of what we do. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if you know if you know where I'm going. The museum postings you've been making about the, the fire truck? No, not at all. Oh, then no. But we can talk about that if you want. I mean, either or. Well, okay, let's talk about that briefly. Yeah. That thing Uh, is cool. That is pretty cool. Um, If you go to the museum Facebook page, museum Instagram, museum Twitter, uh, for the Museum of Off-Road Adventure, uh, same name on all of those. You can find it through any of the social media platforms. Um, You will find that... We shared a GoFundMe. Now, John and I in the past have talked about GoFundMe and kind of our, our lo- I don't say love-hate, more of a hate relationship with GoFundMe <laughs> um, because too many people use it for too many stupid things, oh you know? God, yes. Pe- people be like, oh, oh. Uh, you know, I want to go to Disney World and I blew all my money on, you know, beer speakers, and cigarettes. beer and cigarettes. <laughs> and, you know, so please fund my Disney World trip. Uh, we think those people are idiots and should not be on GoFundMe or anything Absolutely. like that. The idea for GoFundMe originally was for people with uh, medical expenses that they couldn't take care of um, or for funding nonprofits or for funding... I know a guy who's looking for bail money with it. Well, bail money, okay. I mean, let's see how yeah, that works. They made it. <laughs> um, there is a fire department down in Ohio that has a 47 Willie CJ2A that is fully outfitted as a brush truck, um, which a brush truck is a fire department. Um, like a uh, quick field response unit. Yeah, exactly. Kind of quick field response, exactly. Uh, it's a vehicle. Uh, typically, brush trucks are four-wheel drive. It's something that they can drive right into the woods. They can go through a ditch, uh, get out right where the fire, you know. So you might say it can go anywhere, do anything? Yeah, okay. There you go. That's that's bad. That, is that Jeep's slogan one of these days? Oh, yeah. is it? Is that one? Of the, I don't know. They got so many. Um, so uh, this thing's in factory original condition. Besides some very tattered seats that need to be recovered, uh, it is really in a condition that doesn't even need to be restored. It's a very presentable, beautiful Jeep. The fire department down there, and, and I don't want to name names right now. You can read it through the GoFundMe if you're so inclined. Um, but the fire department is having some financial troubles and they need to get a new vehicle and they've decided to sell the Jeep. Now, I don't fully understand their bylaws of their fire department or Ohio law or however it goes, but basically they have to sell it at auction and they have set a minimum price of, or it's a silent bid thing, minimum price $10,000. They don't have to accept the highest bid. They just have to accept the bid that they want to accept over $10,000. Hmm. Um, another a lady, and I don't have my phone in front of me. I wish I remembered her name off the top of my head. Let's see if uh, I can find it real quick. Um, you can do that. Uh, she is with a bunch of Jeep clubs out of New York. And Lynette. Lynette, um, I can't remember Lynette's last name right now. Um, but uh, like I said, I, I'm sometimes I'm bad with names. But I spoke with Lynette quite a bit over the phone actually her name just displays as lynette (laughs) okay it's just lynette all right well that's fine we don't need cooper lynette cooper so lynette cooper um is involved in a bunch of jeep clubs and and online jeep stuff and things like that and she 
uh, along with a lot of other people. There was a lot of uh, negative response, I would say. Uh, that would be fair to say. People saying, this Jeep needs to go to a museum. It's a museum-quality piece. Uh, it's local history in Ohio. Um, they don't want to see it get sold off to a private collection where, or a private person where most likely... Being a clean flat fender Jeep, um, the fire department equipment will be stripped from it. You know, for in a private sale, someone would most likely it'd be a very high chance someone is going to strip all the fire department equipment from this Jeep and just have a clean, all original, never restored numbers matching Jeep. So, the, the real quick, uh, as we're talking this, this has been shared to our four by four talk page. Correct. So you guys will see the post. Actually, let me rephrase it. Those of you listening to this have already seen the post. <laughs> well, it's, it's in the but, 4x4 yeah. Talk Facebook group. Yes. yes. Yep. And so she's trying to raise money uh, to take and purchase this Jeep and donate it directly to the museum. Now, it sounds kind of strange the way I'm explaining this, but basically the museum, we feel that we can't uh, accept the money in... in then turn around to go to an auction for something like that. There's ways we could do it, but it really didn't work very well. Um, so she's accepting this. She's going to purchase the Jeep and donate it to the museum if she can raise enough money. Um, she's only up a couple hundred bucks right now, and she's got a couple weeks uh, to do this. Now what? We're at three hundred right now with it. At three hundred dollars. She's at three hundred. Yep. Now what she's going to do though is if she doesn't reach the goal or she doesn't reach the point where she's able to put in an offer, or if the offer's not accepted by the fire department, she's returning all the funds to whoever, whoever donated it. So, cool. um, you know, if you really want to see this awesome brush truck Jeep in the museum as part of the museum display, uh, go to GoFundMe, um, look up this thing, or more easily go to um, 4x4 Talk, the Facebook group, or any of our social media pages, and you should be able to find it. The title on GoFundMe is Save the Jeep and a little ampersand symbol thing. Help a fire department. Save the Jeep and help a fire department. Yep, so that, that's the title on it right now. Okay, so that, you know, do that, folks. Um, you know, we've got a, a pretty big listener base here. Uh, we'd really love it if you do that. This Jeep would have a permanent home in the Mora. I think that would be a great. That'd be an awesome match to that old Chevy, too. It would be a great that brush truck really collection, cool the two of them, yeah, yeah, to have them next to each other to kind of show some of the differences in brush trucks and the way they would do things. Can we get a Dalmatian, like a museum, the dog, he'll stay there and he'll live there. I'll come take care of him, I promise. I mean, I, you, you take care <laughs> of him, that's fine. but That uh, would be cool. So, uh, yeah. We that, could call him Dave. Yeah, nice. <laughs> so that's where I was going with that, or, with, or you were going with this. Um, I think I will reserve my topic which I think is a very fun topic for our next episode. I like it. I like and, it. but, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm really happy with what you're doing here, John. Um, oh, thank you. you know, and, and I appreciate you doing this for us and I, think and I, just, I hope I get all the kinks worked out within the next couple episodes here. Uh, I think I'm going to settle down tonight when I get home, you know, nice ice cold beer, maybe nice cold whiskey or bourbon drink. And, you know the service manual for the audio mixer and uh, have luck. a good read good luck finding that out. <laughs> yeah i don't know where the service manual is hmm i have no idea if we haven't even had one yeah i'll figure it out we'll we'll sure have to the find website that does. out but yeah. no big deal um you know listeners uh we really appreciate you sticking it out with us over these last two years i think we've been doing this almost uh we'll be two years in may I think okay, it was so May. We'll, I don't remember the exact date, but two years in May. We'll be coming up on two yep. years. And, uh, you know, you've seen some ups and downs and what we've been doing and what we're working with. Uh, Appreciate you. Those of you who've stuck with us when we've been, you know, unable to maintain consistent uploads with things, too. Uh, you know, I, I don't think John or I have the intention of, of stopping this anytime soon. I don't. Yeah, me neither. I, you no, know, I, I, I like it. I want to keep going with it, make it bigger, make it better. And we're still go from there. we're still using this uh, as its initial purpose, which was oh, yeah. to uh, spread the word of the museum. So you know, the Museum of Offroad Adventure has been you know people have come to it because of it. So yeah. that's been a good thing. But uh, you know, John, um, do you want to sign us out, buddy? 
Well, I yeah, I'll start with it here. Or do you got anything so else you want to say? I'll say uh, I'll say this again. One more big final thank you. Hugely appreciated. Couldn't have started this without you to Andrew, the producer. Um, your time with us was well spent. We thank you for everything you've done for us. You know, still consider you absolutely and, of course, a good friend. You know, hope we'll be able to get you back on, involved with it at some point in time. Wish you the best of luck with everything you're doing and everything. So thank you for what you've done for us and helping us to get where we are right now. Uh, again, couldn't have done it without you. It is greatly appreciated, sir. Uh, with that, uh, you've heard us talk about Patreon tonight a little bit more. Uh, we're going to be doing some updates on that. So if you want to check that out, patreon.com slash radio. Uh, access is those $2 a month. We'll get you to all the bonus content we have. Again, you heard about some of our changes there, so stay tuned for that. All of our current episodes up to date now, 100% up to date. I think I uploaded seven or eight new episodes with that, something like that. Maybe a couple less, whatever. There's a lot of good stuff there. Uh, we'll be sharing that onto the Wheel and Pay or the 4x4 Talk page, of course, uh, with, when we make some of that stuff free, so you can check that out. Uh, that being said, facebook.com slash groups slash four by four talk. You want to interact with us a little bit. If you got any questions, anything you want to hear or say, show pictures of a build you're on, anything to that nature, check it out, post a picture, ask your question. Keith and myself are both involved with the page, so we'll check it out and go from there. Uh, I don't know if you want to say anything more about the museum there, Keith. Well, uh, as I mentioned in the episode, the Museum of Offered Adventure is on um, all the major social medias, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram under the Museum of Offroad Adventure. Uh, pretty easy to find. Uh, we don't use Twitter that much. Instagram and Facebook are a little more common for us. Um, definitely check those out. Go ahead and uh, check out that uh, Save a Jeep and Help a Fire Department on GoFundMe. Uh, make a donation. Uh, every $5, $10 that you can do helps. And... Um, you know, basically, uh, as we've said on the website as well for the museum, which Andrew is still going to be very involved in the museum, uh, the museum is currently closed for regular schedule uh, due to the pandemic and some of Michigan's uh, things going up down. We're probably going to have regular hours very soon again, but you can book a visit any given time to the Museum of Offroad Adventure by calling 877-FWD-MORA. Uh, just by calling that number, you can make an appointment, and we can usually uh, make some sort of accommodation for you to visit the museum. Cool, cool. Well, with that, I suppose we'll end this with the as usual. Thanks for listening, and have a good one, everybody. Bye.